Hello, welcome to your video on completing the square. Um, this is a, another way to solve quadratic equations um, when the previous methods that you've learned about aren't working. Uh, you will be able to obviously solve quadratic equations by completing the square by the end of this lesson. The first question is really important. It's why does the completing the square work? Um, it's nice to be able to do it, but it, it's more important that you understand why it works and why it's a method that we can use. Um, you can solve any quadratic equation by writing it in the form m squared equals n. Um, you know that, you've worked with that before. Um, and that is uh, shown in this picture here. Um, this is the x squared piece, and then there are x's, which are represented by the green, and if you count them, there's eight of them, making that equal to 8x. So um, there's the algebra tiles um, of that equation. Um, we're using the example x squared plus 8. Um, so the next thing um, you want to notice is that this, this is the exact same um, expression that we have our x squared plus 8x, or sorry, x cubed squared plus 8x, um, and then it's just shaped and evenly distributed, so now you have four x's on both sides, um, and then you, as you can see, it's starting to make a shape of what looks like a square, um, but we're missing these pieces right in here to make it a complete square, um, and this is where the name completing the square comes from. Um, and you can add tiles, like you can see here, um, of pieces, which is um, 4 squared, because you have 4 times 4. Um, that gives you 16, which is unique means you need 16 of the little ones tiles. Um, and so the completed square then for our problem would be x squared plus 8x plus 16. Um, and then if you factor that, you would come up with x plus 4, and in parentheses, squared that by no, binomial. I want to take just a second to uh, point out, if you haven't noticed, um, what we did was we took our 8x, our b term, we divided it by 2 so that it was split on both sides, um, and then we squared that, which um, or multiplied it together so that we got our 16 pieces. And that's really important to understand because that's the process that we're going to be doing. Um, so when you have a problem and you're trying to complete the square, you will first divide your B term by 2, and then you'll square that answer. Um, and that's how you'll find those missing pieces. So now that you understand that, we're going to practice it. So here we go. Oh, and really quick, I should point out that it doesn't matter uh, positive or negative uh, for your B term. It, it, has, it doesn't change it at all. You can still use the same process. Okay, now let's practice. Before we start truly, truly solving, um, you have to be able to find C to complete the square. Um, sometimes you'll need to do this, um, and sometimes it's already given for you, so it's not a big deal. Uh, in this problem, x squared minus 16x um, just like I talked about in the um, the reason why this works and finding that um, those you know one cubes, um, that's essentially what you're doing with this C term is finding those one cubes. Um, and so how you do that is you take the um, B term. In this case, that's negative 16. You're going to divide that by two, um, and that will give you an answer of negative eight. And then you will square that. So then you end up with an answer of 64. So your um, equation is now going to be x squared minus 16x plus 64. And that, um, now we can take this problem and complete the square. All right, we're finally to the completing the square and solving. Um, how do you find solutions using completing the square? Um, there's two types of situations that you might run across. Um, the first one here is what we're going to do first. This is x squared plus 6x equals 216. Um, so here you have your C term on the opposite side of the equation. So what you're going to do here is first um, you want to complete the square um, or find, sorry, you want to use your C term 
find the C term. Um, and so this is what you're going to do. It's a little bit different because normally you would want to subtract the 216 so that it equals zero. Um, in this case, that wouldn't be helpful. Um, you know, the other methods of solving aren't going to work for this. Um, and it's just a process of, you know, becoming familiar with that. Um, but this, in this case, it, it, the other methods that you've learned won't work. So this is what you're going to do. Um, you're going to take your B term. So you have your 6x here. You're going to take 6, divide it by 2, which is 3, and then square that. So you get 9. You're going to take that answer and put that into your equation. So now we have 6, x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 216. And what you do on one side, you must do to the other. So you're going to add 9 on the other side as well. Um, and now we can simplify this a little bit more. Um, you notice the left side of your equation, um, you can factor. Um, and that's the end goal is you want to be able to factor it. And I know that 3 times 3 is 9, 3 plus 3 is 6. So that's what I have for an answer there. And then the right side, you're just going to add those together and you get 225. Um, so now you're going to take your x plus 3, which is your binomial. That's going to equal a positive or a negative 15. And how did I get that? Well, that's easy to say. Um, if I, Another way to write this would be x plus 3 um, squared. And if I square root, just like I know that I can square root 225, um, I'm undoing that, so I'm going to get positive or negative 15 on the left. Um, and this actually just cancels just so you just have one term left, so x plus 3. Um, now that I have that, I can split this up and say x plus 3 equals positive 15, or x plus 3 equals negative 15. And now I just evaluate, um, so x can either be 12 or x can be negative 18, and those are your two solutions. All right, the other example problem I have for you um, is x squared minus 14x plus 16 equals 0. So here you have 0, um, your equation equal to 0, which you've seen before and are used to. Um, but this one, you can't do anything, any of the other methods with, and so that's why we're going to complete the square. Um, so the first thing we need to do is uh, have our move it, actually. So we're going to take away the 16 on both sides. So we can have x squared minus 14x equals negative 16. Now we can do the completing the square strategy. Um, and so we're going to take that b term, so negative 14 divided by 2, that's negative 7 squared, is 49. So I'm going to add 49 on both sides. I'm just going to kind of move this out of the way. Hopefully it doesn't mess you up. So x squared minus 14x plus 49 equals negative 16. And then don't forget you have to do the same on both sides. So you have to add 49 as well. Um, you can factor this and you'll get x plus 7 squared. Oops, sorry, x minus 7 squared, and that equals 33. And then you can square root both of these so that you have x minus 7 equals, and then this one isn't a nice one, but you can still um, square root it. It's just not a perfect square. Um, you'll get 5.74, positive or negative. Then you split that apart, saying x minus 7 can either be positive or x minus 7 can be negative. Oh, kind of ran out of space there. That should be a 4. Uh, and then you just do algebra, and you get left with x being approximately 12.74. And the little wiggly equal sign means approximately. So I should have had that to begin with. Um, or x is about 1.26. So 
Either of those two are your solutions. It is your turn. What are the solutions to the equation t squared minus 16 equals 247? Make sure you show all of your work and keep it on your notes page. Uh, and then I will have you uh, put your answer on the Google form. So don't forget to do that. Um, very important. So Google form your answers um, to your solution. This is the end of your video. Thank you so much for watching. Have an excellent day.